You are now listening to the Curtis King Podcast. What's going on, music producers, and welcome to a new episode of the Curtis King Podcast. If this is your first time listening, this is a podcast specifically for music producers, but also for creatives and thinkers alike. For those of you that are listening on the traditional podcasting platforms, almost had to spit that out, the podcasting platforms, please make sure that whether it's Spotify podcasts or Apple podcasts, make sure that you hit us with a five star rating if you enjoyed today's episode and follow and make sure that you hit the follow button so that you can get heads up whenever we have a new episode. We tend to drop these about 7 a.m. every Monday. For those of you that want to see the video version of it are already watching here on YouTube. Make sure if you're not there, you go to Curtis King TV on YouTube, Curtis King with two S's, and you'll find this podcast in many more episodes. Super easy. And starting off with that, just want to say thank you for those of you that are watching and listening. So we're going to talk about a few things today in this podcast, but I cannot start this podcast without first and foremost at the recording of this. Just know that when I record these, these are on Saturday before they come out on Monday. So I'm trying to keep as much positive energy and as much prayers as I can send out to DMX, legendary DMX, somebody that's definitely been hugely influential when it comes to applying pressure or applying passion, I should say. I guess you could say pressure, too, but applying passion within your music. There has been no one that has told that story in quite the way he has with the voice that he's had. Uh, Man, I, I think about. First time I heard Rough Riders Anthem, the first time that I heard the energy that he had within those verses, specifically the second verse, I think about um, falling, I think I'm slipping, I'm falling, I can't get up. There was a time where he filled a void after hip hop had gone through a tremendous shift with the loss of Tupac and Biggie. And I'd say more specifically Tupac because of what he represented with the passion of his music. DMX fulfilled a void in the 1999, like that area, 1999, uh, early 2000s. And he really filled a void for those that are struggling with things that I guess most human beings wouldn't understand or just struggling with things in silence. I think that he made the soundtrack for those. He spoke to not just the positive things, but also the, the demons they may that may haunt us at times. And so right now, as it is, the news is that he... Um, he's in the hospital now and he is saying he's in grave condition. I'm praying that by the time this comes out, that it it is still, he is still with us and, uh, recovering, but, um, definitely say a prayer up for him and his family. That being said, um, we're going to talk about a few different things, but first I must shift to Tate Boy. Thank you for all of you that have been supporting our second plugin. I didn't even talk about it on the podcast last week that much, but our second plugin, we have a tape emulator slash vinyl emulator called Tape Boy that is obviously modeled after the um, the Home Alone. What was it? Was it a toy? It was kind of a cassette recorder, pitch shifter. Uh, it's a vintage toy called Talk Boy. It was in the movie Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, one of my favorite movies growing up. You know, I'm like a 90s kid, nostalgia and all of that. I, I'm a man with the flat top, so you know, you should already know that. But um. It was something that was a dream come true. Same developer uh, in Lee, a.k.a. Mr. Mastering, same GUI designer, graphic designer, uh, visionary in Nicholas Gray. And that team right now, man, we it, it is it is us. It is us. And we're making it happen. We have many more plugins to come. But right now, the center focus is Tape Boy and to see all of the reviews, good and bad, to see all of the reviews out there makes me have to sit back. And just think for a second, like, damn, we're actually watching reviews for a plugin that we created. It is now real. And it's a real thing. It's out there. People are using it, putting in their IG stories. I'm sharing it, putting it on Twitter, showing the things that they've created, doing, you know what I'm saying? Doing YouTube live stream. Shout out to HGC and shout out to T-Sketch, who I saw specifically. Decipher, I saw you out there as well. It just blows my mind that this is out there. But um, like my pops used to always say, Act like you act like you've been there before. And um, even when you ain't been there before. And so I'm going to take this. I'm, I'm humbled by it, but also reminding myself that there's a lot of work to do. 
We just actually today, and you should already got this in your email if you already purchased Tape Boy at tapeboyplugin.com. We have an update, an update that includes a sound effects off and on button. And also it has uh, filters for you to roll off certain frequencies. If you want to roll off the bass or the high end of a sample, you can do that all internally within plugins. So for all the folks that keep asking, what's the difference between this and RC20? What's the difference between this and cassette, uh, sketch cassette? The difference is very obvious. The sound effect module in itself, uh, the fact that it goes really it taps into the culture of what's going on right now from the hip hop producers, boom bap to the lo-fi producers that use these ambient sounds in the background more than just vinyl. We've offered you nine sound effects with that. And we're going to be adding, adding more. Of course, that's one aspect of it. Another aspect of it is the fact that it has a ducking effect, a velocity, AKA side chain effect that you can add to your samples all internally within the plugin. So Beyond that, it has an auto gain feature. Um, we, we're, we're tweaking around with the 8-bit effect. The warm effect gives the analog sound. And so there's a lot of things that are like the traditional and a lot of things that are non-traditional. And they're, I mean, that's, that's my personality. If you don't know me by now, I don't expect you to understand. But if you know me, you know that I'm always looking for not, ooh, this is a good money play. Ooh, I bet we make a lot of money like this. That's not what I'm driven by. That's not enough for me. What's enough for me is to create something that other plugin designers say, that's quite innovative. And I like that a lot. That is actually fire. I care about your feedback. And that's why I make sure as producers, I make sure that it's something that is speaking directly to you. That's already in me because I'm a producer. But when it comes to who you think or who you may think I'm trying to gear this to or the why that I have, you don't understand. I am trying to inspire those that inspire me. And that is what Tape Boy is certainly here for. I'm excited to see all these new features coming up. So you guys enjoy that. That's at tapeboyplugin.com. You can go check that out and see the trailer and all that information. Plus, we got some stuff here on the YouTube channel as well. So that being said, I want to talk about two different subjects that I didn't realize, I guess, resonated so much with my core audience. Um, that, you know, I guess they're just really human things that we interact when we do business with other people, when we, um, come together with one another and we're collabing and, you know, we're meeting folks online and whatnot, you know, you, you, you endure, uh, especially when you start to group up and you have a group or a label or, um, a team, you start to realize that sometimes a snake will infiltrate your space. And so I want to talk about how to recognize, how to find, how to see, how to spot, how to fill out if you may have someone that is a quote unquote snake within your your team. We talked about this on a live stream after I was asked the question, you know, uh, I forget the individual that asked the question. Please excuse me for forgetting. But you asked it, I believe, on Tuesday. How what do you do when you spot a snake within your crew? Are you think there may be there? Do you just leave the crew? Do you start from scratch? And so I think I have some really good tips to help you along that way. Also, I want to talk about collaboration, but in a way that I don't see many of my peers talking about in that so many times we get in a place where we're on the come up and we're trying so hard to get on the radar of people and we're trying to work with people and we are looking desperate. We think it's hunger, but it really teeters the line between hunger and desperation. And we don't see it because we're just going after. We think it's just pure hunger and just, you know, just, oh, I just want it that bad. But we don't realize that other people recognize it as thirstiness. People recognize it, whether it is or not, doesn't matter. People recognize it as thirstiness or recognize your 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 tenacity as uh, yeah, a little bit of a try hard. And you know what? I think I can maybe maybe able to get one over on you. So I, I want to I want to get those of you that are that are go getters, those who are just like I was when I was younger. I was a for, I was a forerunner. I was going after it. I wanted to work with as many people as possible. Anybody that was willing to work with me, I wanted to work with. But I realized that that comes with pros and cons. And so we're going to talk about that probably in a second half. I must shout out our sponsor, the official sponsor of the Curtis King podcast, Vaclia Doubler, that allows you to turn your voice into MIDI. We'll talk about that a little bit later at the commercial break of this. So let's go back. Let's scale back to the first topic at hand, which in turn is about how to spot a snake 
within your circle, how to spot someone who doesn't mean well. Let's, let's, I guess we should define a snake, first of all, because I think that in our genre of hip hop, the term snake gets thrown around for everything. Right. It can have a miss. You you and I could have a miscommunication. And if you don't like the way certain words were worded in a way on text message or through an email, you could easily decipher somebody or easily label them as a snake. So I think we should define it the way that I define a snake is someone that has. Someone that says one thing presents themselves as one way but has alternative motives that completely contradict who they present themselves as. Someone who knows they are getting ready to screw you over, but they smile in your face and they still continue to do the work. They answer your request, but they, they have it in their mind. I'm going to screw you over, right? That is snakish behavior to me. But many times when you get into a place where you have a group of people, right, or you have, uh, uh, I don't know, a label situation or whatever you're a part of. I don't know your situation, especially as a producer. Maybe you have a, a collective of folks that you're working with. It's very easy to. Overlook signs, especially because you don't want to be the person that is paranoid. You don't want to be the person that looks around and is like, I'm accused of everybody of being that and everybody's going to end up pointing at you because you're like, why are you always accusing somebody of being a snake? It must be you. So when you get into these group situations, it's really hard, especially because many times it's not as cut and dry as the definition that I gave you. Some people can do things that can be labeled as snakish, right? Especially when money gets involved or some people you know, they don't act that way until money gets involved. And money is not to blame for that. Money, I always felt, is a magnifying glass to who we really and truly are. It is not just the root of all evil, right? It is the magnifying glass to who we truly are. It amplifies whatever personality, character flaws you have. If you have an inability to control yourself, if you have an inability to share it will come out in your spending habits when you finally have the air and opportunity and the money in front of you to now display those parts of your characteristics that have flaws. That's how I've always viewed it. So when it comes to somebody that may be in a crew, it's kind of hard because there's like a little bit of a gray area where you get around folks who all have sort of the same goals in mind. They want to achieve the same thing. And you're seeing yourself achieving things, working in this synergetic space. And many times it can get lost upon you. These subtle things that happen, these subtle things that are said, these things that you may feel when you're in the presence of someone, but you just don't quite know enough to accuse anything. You don't quite know enough to even put them out there like that. And you continue to go on because you got your mind on the goal. If you're always looking at the side of your, your, your yourself, right, you're looking in the rear view mirror, you're always looking in the, you know, you're looking at that rear view mirror, you always look in the rear view mirror and you're not looking at the traffic ahead of you and the path ahead of you. You're either at a full stop or you are inevitably going to crash. If that is what it is, you don't have the luxury to always be looking around and, oh, oh I think this person, uh, oh, oh, no, they, that is, you don't have the luxury to do that. So many times these things can be, these things, these signs cannot be seen. But one thing that I tur told, turd, <laughs> one thing I told the individual that asked me the question in that live stream about if they should restart their whole situation because they suspect that someone may be acting contradictory to what they present themselves as. One thing I told him, I said, before you react, before you make any rash decisions, observe, observe. See how you feel when certain people enter a room and when they exit a room. When you're in a space where you're creatively making music, nobody's thinking as deeply on this kind of stuff. They're thinking about the music at hand. I'm challenging you to do this really in any room. It doesn't have to be just a music room. It could just be just in general in life. Challenge yourself to observe. How are you feeling? Do you feel like the air in the room feels a little bit tighter when this person comes in? Do you feel uneasy? 
does does their presence make you feel a little fidgety? And not because you're nervous around them, but because something about them just seems a little bit off. <laughs> um, do you feel like you got to pay attention to this? I know as as the majority of my audience here are, are guys, but I know I do have a female demographic within here. And I know guys typically, you know, uh, alpha, alpha males don't want to talk about anything dealing with any feelings. But you have to pay attention to these signs that are around you. You were given God given gifts. I I never forget it. Um, one of my science classes told me or, or, or shared with me information. One of my science teachers shared with me that women have the ability to smell and pick up what are called pheromones, right? Um, I'm, I'm gonna butcher this definition, but it's the way that I, I understood it is like it's it's, it's an aroma that comes off of somebody who means to do you to mean means to do you means to not do you well right it's an aroma that comes off of someone that is has bad intentions and it's the reason why when they're walking like maybe from a bar and they're walking to their car and they're getting their keys ready and they're walking down maybe like a dark parking structure it's the reason why they're able to say Something doesn't feel right in here. They're picking up on the pheromones of this stalker or this person that doesn't mean well. That is a God given gift. I think that we all have some primal instincts that we need to tap into. And instead of it being such a Philly, oh, I don't want to think about my feelings and what, you need to tap into that because that is one of your cheat codes when it comes to spotting folks that don't mean well within your circle. So one thing I told him, I said, please observe the room when people come in and when people go out, see what just just notice how it feels in the room. Is there a weight lifted off? Right. Does someone walk in and then the room lights up? These are signs that you want to look out for, especially as you're trying to decipher. Who may be a mood changer within this particular circle? I'll never forget him. Best manager I ever had goes by Salas told me, he said, in this life, you're going to meet. He said, in this life, Curtis, you're going to meet people who are outlets and who are plugs. You and I are plugs. Excuse me. You and I are outlets. Excuse me. OK. Outlets are people who give energy. They give out a lot of energy. They help people. They charge people up. They motivate them. They inspire them. They electrify them. Plugs are people who find outlets to plug into and drain for all their resources until they're fully charged up and they can go on about their lives. And after they char and after they lose that charge, they find somebody else or they come back to the same source, that same outlet to charge back up again. So the first step I say. Observe, observe the way that they talk about themselves. If someone talks about themselves in such a negative manner in which you start to say, damn, bro, you maybe you should chill. Imagine what they're saying about you when you're not on their best. When you're not in it, when, when, you, when you're when you're not on not in their best. Uh, 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 how do I put it? When you're not on their good side. Right. Imagine what they say about you when you're not on their good side. If they talk down about themselves, if they say crazy things about themselves, imagine what they'll say about you the minute you say something they don't agree with or they feel is disrespectful. Pay attention to how folks talk about themselves. It will give you a hint into how cloudy or how obstructed their view may be. So those are two. Observe the room. Watch the way people talk about you. Here's another one that I found that has helped me out dramatically, especially when it comes specifically to Instagram. Um, it's kind of funny to, 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 to think about a social media being something to help you uh, that helps your mental health in some aspect. But there's pros and cons to everything. And I think there are pros and cons to seeing the behavior that people have on social media. Because I feel like they see it as a safe spot to say passive aggressive things. 
Or they see it as a safe area to say things that are, no, it's not that serious, bro. It's just Instagram. It's just Instagram. It's not that serious. People see that as a safe space to say what they really want to say, but just don't have enough inspiration, don't have the audacity, don't have the, as my homie Epic says, the testicular fortitude <laughs> to actually step up and say. So they wait for an opportunity. That opportunity usually comes in the form of when it's time to laugh at you. You ever see somebody that's laughing a little bit too hard? Like maybe you and your boys is like snapping at each other, right? Y'all going back. Oh, man, what's your man? What's your what's your what's your uh, big year blimp head ass? Yeah. Oh, Bobby's world head ass. Right. You ever get in your other homie like, oh, man, what's your what's your boy? If you don't boy, what's your what's your cross eyed eyebrow having head ass? Like, you know, you getting into it and everybody laughing. And is that one person that cannot wait for that person to get you? And they're like, ah, and they're going in. It's so bad. They're laughing so hard. They're in tears that you look at them. And even a person that made the joke, look at them like, I'm finna get on your head ass for talking all that. And they looking at them kind of crazy because it's like, it wasn't that funny. It was funny, but it wasn't that funny. That's when we got to start questioning intent. I've noticed it on Inst in Instagram whenever people who don't have good thoughts circulating around you, people who do not like who you are, but still feel like they got to do business in some capacity with you or feel like they can benefit from you. They don't show up for the good news. And if they do show up for the good news, something I learned from the 48 laws of power, I don't like everything in it, but there's certain things that just, I mean, they just are what they are. One thing I never forget about that is be careful of the people that show up first every single time. Because some people who are conflicted amongst themselves feel like they have to show you some kind of love so that they can prove to themselves they're not a hater towards what you're doing. Even though they're secretly deep down inside, they do not like or that maybe they're jealous or maybe they feel a certain way. They don't like it, man. They don't like you. Right. They just don't like what you stand. They don't like it. They don't like that everybody's showing you love. But they'll be the first one to show love so they can say, All right, look, 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 I show, I've been supporting the bro. I've been supporting sis. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you can't call me no hater. That's something to look out for. It's all the folks. And, and, and that don't 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 overthink that, too, my friends. If you somebody that I know, you know what I'm saying? And you, and you leave stuff first, you leave stuff first. I ain't tripping on that. Don't don't make it a one size fits all type of situation. I'm just saying that's something to look out for. Most times, though. They won't even show up in the first commentary. They won't show up at all for any good news. Why would they show up to celebrate you? Even if you're working with them, why would they celebrate you when they're not, especially if they're not involved in the congratulations? If people aren't hitting them up as well, why would they celebrate you? If that's the mentality and somebody you want to look out for. In addition, when those folks don't show up for the good times, Oh, my goodness. But they have time. Oh, they have ample time to show up and laugh at you. That's why I always put out. Maybe I shouldn't share this because those of you who don't like me are going to stop commenting, maybe. Or maybe you'll, ampli maybe you'll amplify it. I don't know. But I always throw out a little bit of bait. I love the fact that I have thick skin to laugh at myself harder than anybody could ever laugh at me. I love the fact that there is no one that can say anything to me that hurts more than the things that I say about my own music. The things that I say about myself are more hurtful than anybody else could even come up with. Why? Because I know myself more, first of all. And secondly, because I got buttons that I can push that you don't know nothing about. You don't know nothing. You know that? You don't know nothing about. OK, that's something that I've noticed, though, is that. Those folks who do not like you, they don't rock with who you are and what you're doing and, 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 and they want an opportunity to be congruent, because this is all about congruency. When we talk about this, it's almost like human psychology one on one. This is all about congruency. If on a if 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 on a personal level, someone does not like you. And they have to fake like they do. They have to find little micro aggression, little micro opportunities to be contrast to everything you do. That's the same thing in a professional environment. 
When you're in a meeting and someone always, always, always finds a counter argument to what you say all the time, you got to look at that and be like, so what's the real issue here? Is it the idea or is it my existence? Because it seems to me that you have it out for me. And I think that you'll see that when you get an opportunity. I'll throw some bait out there every once in a while on my social media where it's time to laugh at me because I have no man. You know, the ability to laugh at yourself is the is the most mature and, and one of the most. Happiness for happiness, keeping tools that you have in your shed, if you have the ability to laugh at yourself. Nobody can hurt you. Right. Because you already laughing with them. You're like, yeah, that was funny. Oh, goofy, head back, goofy head ass boy. Like you can already do that. It's easy. But I do notice when I throw these, I throw that bait out. Somebody always bite it. Somebody who I'm like, you? Where you been for the last six months? Oh, now you want to show up. Oh, when it's time, when it's open season to laugh. At, oh, now you want to show up. Thank you for Thank you for letting me know who you are. That was necessary. And I think that's the last thing I want to say before we go to the commercial break is that don't view this as a bad thing that is happening. You get a snake in your circle, right? Um, I was watching uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, and that's such an amazing movie that talks about Fred Hampton, the Black Panthers and the uh, uh, the the informant that basically segued his way into the Black Panther Party and was. Uh, it's just it's a crazy movie. I mean, obviously, the this, this story has been out there for, for decades and decades. But I want you to, if you get an opportunity, watch that, especially if you have questions circulating around this topic. That really breaks it down how somebody can learn the language. Somebody can learn the way that you get down. They can learn, you know, your likes and dislikes and then still have alter alternative motives and still. After they know you, meet your family, they still have alternative motives. That movie will show you a lot. But the one thing I do want you to see is that this is something that is beneficial to you. Because one, when you get bit by a snake, you're wiser. Two, you start to take into account. Uh oh, my wife came here with my, with my coffee. Oh, you good, love. You good. You good. Thank you. Shout out to my wife. Um... When it does happen, you become wiser. And secondly, after you have that wisdom, you do something very, very important with it, which is to protect your energy. Right. Which is to cons not even conserve, but to put it in places that are more productive. Also, it makes you a lot more level about how life is. You're not going to always be around people that love what you're doing. You're not going to always be around people that celebrate you. And you don't want to over celebrate the positive feedback either. It's the reason why I respond back to these crazy folks that come into my streams and say crazy stuff, because I feel like if I think this person is 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 worthy of a response, positive response because they said something positive. How is this person unworthy? That is incongruency within me. Right. When there's incongruency. There's a part of you that's like, I got to push, I got to push, I got to push, I got to push until this makes sense. And so. When you have that incongruency, it is up to you, my friends, to to recognize that. And then also when moving forward, it starts to get you from being too high on the compliments, right? Too low on the disrespect. And it just levels you right here. I like to feel that my in my life, I've done a lot of this, right? And, and, and unfortunately, I've done a lot of this ups and downs. I get really, really low when I hear something bad or somebody coming at me or somebody I feel like is snaked out and I go really, really high when I get compliments. That is the wrong way to go about it. I feel now, especially after listening to some advice that I heard from Gary Vee, you don't want to get too high on the high, too low on the lows. You just want to make sure that you stay here and unsurprised by the scenarios. That happens. You know, hey, you know what? That happened. But I'm, gl I'm glad for it because I was blessed with the wisdom to move a little bit differently. You know what? That sucks because I trusted this person. I believed in this person and they still flipped on me. But you know what? Would I have rather not known and had them still around? It's always a blessing. It's always a blessing. Recognize that. Observe. Don't react. Don't be emotional. Try your best not to be emotional about the situation, right? 
And if you're going to be emotional, be be emotional within your own boardroom, your own dojo. Let those emotions flow out, but think within your own dojo. Don't go public with it. Don't go snapping at people. No, no. Let that happen within your own dojo so that you can have out this large, loud, loud, loud argument or disagreement between the party that believes that this person may be this way and the other one that says it's not that way. You need to have that. You need to find some congruency so that when you approach people, it is in line with who you truly are. Just a little bit of advice. Let's go to a quick commercial break from our sponsor, Voclia Doubler, turning your MIDI, excuse me, turning your voice into MIDI. I think you're going to love this, especially if that sounds like an interesting idea. Let's go ahead and go to this commercial break and I'll see you in just a second. The Curtis King podcast is proudly sponsored by the Voclia Doubler. What is the Doubler? Well, I think better than telling you, I should show you. You trying to tell me I can use this microphone to make beats, to make melodies, to make chord progressions. I can use my voice. I'm all in. Pretty cool, right? Check this out. The Voclia Doubler represents the future of making music. The Voclia Doubler is a real-time voice recognition MIDI controller. It offers up a never-before-seen way to translate your musical ideas into reality using the one instrument you've been practicing since birth, your voice. Make more of the music you love without having to worry about how to get your ideas into your DAW. Before the Doubler even sponsored this podcast, I picked it up just because I'm a geek about technology. And I personally picked up the Doubler Studio Kit, which allows you to hum a melody, a synth pattern, or even beatbox one shots right into FPC if you use FL Studio or whatever DAW that you're using. This also allows you to manipulate effects and filters in a way that only the voice can. To get the Studio Doubler Kit, all you got to do is access getdoubler.com forward slash Curtis King. Okay. Thank you once again to our sponsor, Voclia Doubler. I want to end this on another note, specifically talking about collaboration. I think a lot of us, especially in the beginning, like I alluded to earlier, we're very, very eager to get out there, get our name known, to work with folks that we feel like can help us learn things, that can help us advance, that can help us build our audience, that can help us just whatever capacity we need help. We're excited. And we just we're excited for just the idea of collaboration in general. It's a great place to be at. However, what you must understand, and it's funny how, how much these two topics that we've already talked about, how much they kind of relate in that you got to be careful with that energy, with that overeager energy. Because I've had it. I've possessed it. I embodied it. I was eager to work with everybody. I was, I remember DMing uh, Kendrick Lamar's manager way back in the MySpace days. Like, oh man, he's so dope, man. This guy. And he wasn't Kendrick Lamar at the time. He was, he was uh, K-Dot. Oh man, K-Dot is so fire. I didn't realize how big of a label they were at that time. Even at that time. It's like uh, years and years ago. It was like 2006, maybe. I don't know. It was way back. I DMed the manager. Uh, day free. And I was like, yo, man, I want to do a remix to a song. He had a song called uh, uh, Oh My Mama. Like that's throwback, throwback K-Dot. Uh, if you know about that, shout out to you. But um, I loved that song. And I was like, yo, I want to remix with it. Like delusional about remixing with it. Like I'm, I'm in my grandmother's patio, right? <laughs> J-Rock was signed at the time and he was the biggest artist on that, on that label. I'm like delusional at this point. But I'm like, yeah, man, I'm tight. He tight. We should come together. And then I got left on red. And I think that that needs to happen first and foremost. But secondly, when it comes to collaboration, you got to be careful about putting that eager energy, not because you'll be denied or people will tell you no, because you need no's. No's build characters, right? No. Anytime somebody tells you no, it helps build your character. It helps build your confidence. It helps chill you the F out. So that you can stop being so overeager. You need to get slapped around on, on enough times in this industry before you say, do I need to approach this person? Do I need anything from them that I cannot create on my own? What, am, what, what, is, the, what is the rush? What is the urgency? I need to chill, don't I? I need to chill. Okay, I'll chill. I'll chill. You need enough of those to, to, to embody that. I never forget, mommy Noah James should tell me, he said, 
we first met Mers, who was somebody that we all looked up to, uh, uh, you know, coming up and whatnot. We finally had an opportunity to break bread with him. And I'm not, it's crazy now because that's, that's, you know, that's the bro. Uh, but remember, I never forget, Noah was like, do you notice something about Mers? The first time we ever met, met him and talked to him and, you know, we were like the eager young guys that were like excited to work with him. I wanted to produce for him. Noah wanted to get on paid dues and rap with him. And um, when we finally met him, Noah said something that, that really struck out to me. He was like, you notice that he moves at a different speed? I was like, what you mean? He's like, bro, he even talks at a different speed. And it's hard to describe to somebody who's like... I'm ready to go. Shut up. Shut up, Curtis. I can't even watch this podcast when it's not on 2X because I got to go. It's hard to explain that to somebody who's in that mode. But the reality of it is he did move at a different speed. It was a speed that was gifted to him that was slower than us because we were like, yeah, not slow in the sense of father time catching up with him, not slow in the sense that he was depleted and tired, but slow in a sense that it was controlled. Slow in a sense that he was confident enough to move in the speed that he was moving, knowing that things will be all right. I think when you're younger, you move super fast, supremely fast, blazing fast because you're worried about making certain goals before you get a certain age. You're worried about this person made it at a certain age and I look up to them and I don't want to be behind them. And you're worried about what your parents are telling you. You're worried about what your friends are telling you. You're worried about all these different factors that don't really factor in to the way things naturally happen. He moved at a speed that was directed by confidence and experience. And we moved at a speed that was devoid of experience. We weren't thirsty. We probably did said some things that sounded like, mm, y'all a little bit young acting. You feel me? Like y'all, yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all some old happy to be here. head ass, right? I've been using head ass a whole lot. Today. Y'all some happy to be here type of guys. And luckily, he wasn't one of the people that I'm going to mention that when you do deliver that energy, they look at you like a happy meal, boy. They look at you like, oh, it's time to eat. Oh, oh, you would do you willing to do anything? Bet. Why don't you come on over here, man? Hey, come on. on come on down here, bro. I'd even introduce you to everybody here for real. Oh, man. I can't believe I'm here. You get yourself in that session. You get, you know what I'm saying? You ready to collab. And then they say, hey, man, we can really get this going. Like, if you like what we did today, man, just slide me like $1,500 underneath the table. $1,500, that's it? Oh, man. Let me, let me, let me, let me go. You know what I'm saying? Let me go look at my numbers. And yeah, that's all the money I got. Hey, man, we got to do it. Because you know what I'm saying? One life to live. You got to go after it. Then you give that person the money. And then that person takes your money and you walk home thinking that you, you, your life about to change because of a collaboration. And then the person that actually handles the business sends you an email like, uh, yeah, we're not going to be able to release that song. Has to get approval from the label or, and I'm just giving very random examples, but you'll get that message and then you'll be like, wait a minute, but everything was okay in a session. The point that I'm making is this, when you move with desperation, you move in a way that attracts people who take advantage of desperation. When you wear your dreams on your sleeve, when you put them out there, when you let everybody know what you want to accomplish, people will entertain you. People will talk about how much they believe in you with alternative motives and alternative points of views that says, yeah, that's cool, but I'm not going to let bro pass me up. Like you can talk about all that stuff, but I bet you won't do it. Hope you won't do it like day day and next Friday. Bet you won't bet you won't get her. Hope you don't get her. <laughs> like the true epitome of hater language. I, I bet you don't do it. Bet you don't do it. Mentally, they're saying that, right? For those that 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 are attracted, for those who are attracted to that energy, you have to be careful. For those of you that are so eager to collaborate with people, you have to understand that your eagerness is putting all of your cards on the table. Your over-eagerness, your, your almost thirstiness is putting all of your cards on the table that says, I'm willing to take anything that you give me. As long as you give me some, some I guess, some basic human decency and, 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 and respect, um, I'm willing to give you everything. 
And when somebody sees that, when somebody sees that you care more about your dreams than your business, get ready for them to take full advantage of you and those dreams. And they will hold up your dreams while you're saying, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, put, put the dream on the side. What's good with these numbers? Why do splits look like that? Why do percentages are like that? Bro, do you not want, they bring the dreams right back here. My hand right now, if you guys are listening, you can't see me doing this, this craziness, but my hand is going across the camera right now, okay? That's the dreams. Every time, every time you're like, wait a minute, move the dreams. Wait, 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 wait. Let me get this straight. I'll produce this for you and you're only going to give me this percentage. Fam, this song is going to be the greatest song that you've ever seen in your life. I, bro, you're going to blow up, man. Everybody, man, Michael Jackson, you feel me? Like he he, he going to come back and he going he gonna to be like, damn, it's the greatest song I've ever heard. But fam, these numbers don't make any like Like I respect it and I want to do this. I really want this to happen. Fam, you know how many, you know who, who, gonna, who, gonna, who, who what radar are you going to be on with this? That's the dream that keeps coming in and blocking your vision. And there's so many people who are professionals and using your dreams against you. And they'll even have you to the point where they sell you this dream. And if you wise up and you say, no, I, I'm not going to do this. It doesn't feel right. They even have that Debo mind control, right? Rest in peace, Tiny Lister. They have that Debo mind control that, uh, that, that, that makes you, after the fact, say, damn, did I make the wise decision? Because look at them, like they're doing really well. Be careful about what your eagerness, your over eagerness, your thirstiness, your go getter. Be careful about how you display that. Be careful about being too thirsty for collabs, paying whatever, because you are leaving yourself open for the opportunity to be quote unquote scam. That's one of producers favorite words What's like two shorts. Favorite word? What's my favorite word? Scam. Why are you trying to do it like me? Like that's producers favorite word. They can't wait to get scammed. Everybody's scamming. Right. You don't get a response at an hour. That's a scam. I didn't they accuse me of that. They send me an email on, on, on a plug in support. If they don't get a response within the next five minutes. Oh, I knew this was a scam. I, I knew it was a scam, 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 scam. Shut up. Shut up. Hey, no scam. It's just people have other pri people got other things going on in life. I'm car I'm currently changing my son's diaper. I will get to your email as soon as possible or my assistant will. Just give us a second, please. That being said, though, you got to be careful about when you display that, what it attracts. So I saw somebody that asked a question. This is what inspired this whole rant is the fact that they were trying to figure out how can I get people to collaborate with me online when there's people that are not even close to me that make the kind of music I make. And I was like, look, that looks like a really interesting predicament that a lot of people find themselves in, but you're living in the internet age. They were like, cool, but how do I get on the radar of people who are on the internet that I can collaborate with that are going to help me? And see, that's where the issue comes in. If you're always looking at people that you collaborate with as things that can only help you, you're not approaching this collaboration in a way that is going to be serving for both sides. Your music is not enough. Some people say, well, I'm providing a beat. That's not enough. What value do you bring someone who has a payroll, who has people on payroll, who has a staff who has to make their appearance look larger than life so that they can support the livelihood of themselves, their family and their staff? What are you bringing to the table? That may hurt some feelings. What are you bringing to the table? Music? That's it. They already have access to music. What else? Do you have an audience? Do you have some kind of influence? Do you have something they can learn from? Do you do videography in addition to your to your to your production? Do you do like you have to bring something to the table outside of just music? Music is just a connection point. Right? Music is just you know how you'll get like certain certain toys or certain, you know, uh, electronics that have like a uh, 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 one connection and they connect, right? Connects to a battery pack. And then the battery cap, okay, kind of like uh, laptops. And the battery pack loads into the, the battery pack loads into the out, goes into the plug that goes into the outlet. If you don't plug the plug into the outlet, you're not going to get any power. That's because the first part is just a connection point, right? The connection point is, hey, I make music. I'm a producer that loves what you do. And I provide music. And I would love to provide music for you as an artist. Cool. We got a connection point. 
Still don't got no electricity. Still don't got no kind of power going through it. Because what can you do for what can we do for each other? How can this be mutually beneficial? And a lot of producers, a lot of artists, too, who go seeking these collabs don't have that answer. And when you don't have that answer and you leave it up to the other person to decide, you are distracting them from what is in turn the thing that got you, got them on your radar. If you go up to somebody and it's someone I, 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 I don't like, I understand it comes from a good place in people's hearts, but I don't like when they approach me with the, with with this. They say, yo, Curtis, I'm an inspiration. I appreciate it. That's cool. All good. I appreciate it. Um, but when you say. Just let me know what I can do for you. I don't know what you do. And me figuring out what you do. Is wasting time that I can be doing what I'm already doing with the system I already have in place. It's the same thing with folks that are 10 times busier than me that have way bigger staffs and way bigger employee sizes than I do. If you're constantly hitting them up, hey, 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 yo, 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 I, I do I do a lot of things. You feel me? Like instead of hitting them up with this I do everything buffet approach, how about you say, bro, I see that you're putting IG reels up. Or no, I see that you're putting up a lot of Instagram content. I feel that based upon your numbers, you could kill it on IG reels. Allow me to do some IG reel edits. In addition to that, right? Maybe you maybe don't let don't let everything out the bag. You just do the IG reels first. I could kill some IG reels for you. You kill it. They're looking at you as a priority for that. It gets you a step inside the room. It gets you in a place where now someone who is in demand is now sacrificing that time to do business with you. You establish some kind of footing. After you establish the footing, you're in the room. When you're in the room, then you could say things like, you said you were looking for what kind of beats? Oh, man, it's crazy, man. I got this producer I've been working with. I've been trying to get this kind of sound. It's funny that you say that I'm also a producer. Man, get out of here, man. Look at the real dude trying to be a producer. No, I'm, I'm a producer. All right, for sure. Well, you got a flash drive, and then you pull up, you play, and you'd be surprised how many opportunities may or may not come from that. But that is the way that you network. That is the way that you, tra that you traditionally and organically build with people. Right? You know, I... I it's so crazy to me now how many producers have it in their mind that they're going to be best friends with these producers that they look up to by trolling them. They really look at that as a legit business strategy. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna go at bro. But then like when 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 he get emotional and I get emotional, we say things we don't really mean. We're going to get on the phone and then we're going to hash it out. And after we hash it out. We finna be brothers. You feel me? Like what kind of game plan is that? A lot of folks, you, you, they, they try to, they try to bait me into it, but I don't. And so as you're approaching and you're trying to get collaborations, I always say, find the people that are operating at your level first, right? Find people that you can be mutually beneficial to be in the life of one another. If you find a, a mutual way that you both can give value to one another, that'll be a lot more beneficial than trying to move your way up the ladder 17, 18 steps up to somebody who's in a whole nother ballpark. Somebody that is looking at you like, aside from a beat, I, look, what kind of value do you bring? And maybe you're still establishing that too. And that's why I say, you know, you have to pay attention and, and, and not be in such a rush to leave the dojo, your dojo, your, 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 your space, your, Excuse me, your home studio, your bedroom, your closet, your whatever room that you have to gather your thoughts, even if you're sharing it with somebody, even when you put headphones on, even if it's your gaming time, whatever you have in your life that allows you to gather your thoughts, if it's a place that you go to, that is your dojo. You have to spend time in your dojo before you start reacting, before you start wanting things, because what you realize within your dojo, whether you meditate, whether you work on music in it, whether you just sit in complete utter silence, is that you have a lot more of what you need than what you realize. You already have what you need. So therefore, going to another human being who has the same 24 hours, who had to start from the same place, which is from scratch, to help and to, and to, to, to grow your business and to grow your stuff or whatever you're trying to do as a producer through collaboration, it's a plan, but it's not a sustainable one. 
focus in on your dojo. You already have so much. You have the same opportunity to build from where you're at right now. Do something with that. Instead of trying to find people that can fail for you, instead of finding people who have already failed and that's the difference between you and them. I never forget. It was a multimillionaire, multi-billionaire, I think I actually said. He said, the only thing separating me from the multimillionaire and the, and the multimillionaire from the person that ain't made their first million is the fact that I failed more times. I had more at bats. You get those at bats in your dojo. You get those at bats when you're sitting here trial and error, testing things out. And, you know, you go from being in very humble beginnings and testing things out and being told you're crazy and stupid and actually being crazy and stupid. And to the point where you dedicate enough time and you start getting information after you get the information, you start to actually be knowledgeable after you're being knowledgeable. People start to recognize that you're knowledgeable. And then eventually they say, damn it. We can't even deny it. This dude is a genius. We can't even deny it. The proof is in the pudding. How many times does he have to be great before we acknowledge that? That is what I would love for you to work on more so than trying to find a collaboration to help you level up. Thank you for watching today's episode of the Curtis King podcast. I had to get that energy out. Plus, not to mention, it is hot than a mug in here. Oh, no, it's not. It's just the lights on my head. It's 72 degrees. It's not too bad. But thank you for watching the Curtis King podcast. You know, I greatly appreciate you. Hold on. Let me stop this music before it start blaring in my headphones. I appreciate you so much for listening. Uh, I just want to make sure that you know, once again, my second plugin, our second plugin at Slap Experts is out. It's called Tape Boy, tapeboyplugin.com, or just go to slapexperts.com and get uh, that and beat timer as well. So I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for those that are listening on the podcast platforms. Make sure that you leave us a five star rating in the commentary if something was said that resonated with you. Also, for those on YouTube, leave a comment and let me know what really resonated with you or any advice that you may have for the things that we talked about. Like I always say, my friends, in this life, you will not be full of life until you decide to live life to its fullest. Once again, this is Curtis King of the Curtis King podcast sponsored by Voclia Doubler. Getdoubler.com forward slash Curtis King. Have a good one. Peace.